Hi guys, so today I'm going to review in Eve of Man by Giovanna and Tom Fletcher. So first of all, I've got a little bit of a different setup. Sorry if you see my messy bed, but this is quite a nice angle. I've got my studio light thing over right at the very corner next to my wardrobe, just where I usually keep it, but tilted towards me. My regular light on, my bookshelves, but also just a nice wide expanse where I feel comfortable standing up. So I forgot I had my bloody thing tied like this that is me being silly earlier on um but yeah if you like this layout for like book reviews and stuff like that let me know i hope i have enough battery to record this because it's just dropped to one try let's try we can do this so anyway evil man i recently read in december um i would have mentioned this previously kind of briefly um in a wrap up or something i read it for part of my witchathon um tbr so it was included in that and if you don't know what it's about it's, it's it's one of my youtube spotlight not youtube spotlight youtube authors books because um obviously giovanna and tom are vloggers but also they are more than that um, not that vloggers on its own isn't something awesome but obviously tom is from mcfly so he's a singer songwriter and musician and he's also an author of like children's books and Giovanna is also an author of I think she does more like general fiction women's fiction sort of thing contemporary I've never read any of her books I've read like the dinosaur that pooped something by Tom Fletcher I'm pretty sure but anyway that's kind of what I know about their writing history and sort of what they do but because of that it was one of those things where it was like an author buy I like Tom as an individual and seeing that he had a sci-fi novel out with his partner his wife I thought I'm gonna try that um so yeah basically it's about a it's really interesting actually it's about our world, our earth, I'm not sure how far into the future it is, I can't remember, but it's believable and it's done well. Basically there has been a 50 year drought of women. People have said it sounds like this other thing, I think it's a film maybe, but I can't remember what it's called and I'd never heard of it before, but I guess it's that, but I think in that one it's a 10 year woman drought or whatever um and obviously no females are born during that time people are starting to think oh shit we're going into crisis um we're going to become an extinct species so obviously matters are put into hand to try and protect our species from decline stuff goes crazy um and then one day a female is born to a very unlikely couple and sort of like things go from there and from the prologue i sorry i'm staring over there because i thought i saw a spider on the wall from the prologue I was kicking myself that I didn't get to this any sooner because honestly it was such a good read. I actually ended up giving it a 5 out of 5 stars overall and I'm just, I feel like an idiot that I was putting this off. It was one of those books that I was constantly putting on like TBRs whenever I did them but it would just slip through my fingers and I'd end up pushing it back and thinking oh I can read that next month and I just never got to it until now obviously. So yeah it's, a re it's got a really strong plot, um, really strong characters. I just adored it. I will say in this review I am going to be talking more about spoilery things just because I didn't mention them in my Goodreads review but if you want to read more of my non-spoiler thoughts you can check that out. Um, I will let you know when I come to spoilers though of course. I actually really adored how strong Eve became as a character. I have seen other people say that it felt a little bit wishy-washy and that she didn't really save herself but I like how to me personally I thought like a word popped up in my head and I thought oh my god this kind of reminds me of Rapunzel in a way but at the end the two main characters not at the end like it's not a spoiler really but at the end they sort of save each other which is kind of like a metaphorical view if you will and um, which I thought was really nice so she was like she she was like a timid sheltered girl obviously because of the lifestyle and you know what she was in terms of gender um, she was just very naive to how the real world was um, how her life was it was just very built up and then Bram was an interesting contrast to that um, in the fact that he was also very naive obviously being brought up in the same sort of area but complete different roles but he knew more of what it was really like out in the world um, and them two together and apart were just really strong characters I love that they could be their own individual people as well as being together uh, it was just very very interesting honestly there's one point um i mentioned in my written review as well basically eve's just looking at herself and she mentions it's just casually like it's not even an issue that one of her breasts are like lopsided and that just passed in passing throwaway comment was just it was so nice to read because she didn't care this girl that's supposed to be like the perfect savior didn't care in, in that respect and I think it's a nice message to give to young people who are probably insecure 
about how they look that you know this perfect seemingly perfect person that's supposed to end all of the world's troubles has this minor you know flaw that's not really a, do you know what i mean like just reading that i smiled and i was like that's really lovely i don't know if it was meant to be that deep but it touched my soul a little bit <laughs> um i will try and find some reviews I'm, i don't know if i've mentioned already but i am going to try and put like one or two um, other reviews that I have stumbled across for books that I do single reviews on now in the description just so you can have like a different viewpoint or see something that discusses a point better than I can perhaps um, I think that'd be really beneficial and it's also a sharing the word about other people as well um, but one thing that I noticed some people had commented on is the this is like one of the um, criticisms I have of the story is that the world building felt a little bit confusing to me um, funnily enough for me the world building that was struggle, strugglesome, if that's a word, was Eve's dome and her space. I just couldn't lay out and map out in my head how it was all set up. Um, I, I don't know why I struggled with it, I guess. It, it's strange, really, because it's, it's a confined space and I shouldn't have had problems understanding what I was reading, but for some reason I just did, and apparently I'm not the only one, so I thought I'd just put that out there. I mean, for me, it wasn't enough that it was distracting from the actual story. Um, it's just one of those sort of irritating things that I thought of, you know, every now and then. <laughs> I will say as well, this is one of the only times, really, that I've been interested in the author's writing processes. Like, how did they come up with the characters? Did, like, Giovanna and Tom have specific characters they wrote for? Or did they just throw ideas together and just wrote both characters together? How did they sort out the alternating chapters? Did one, like, write all of those person's chapters and then come together and sort of split it in a way that... Like, I'm really fascinated. And I never really interested that much in, like, the writing side of things. So it was interesting that I was actually interested in that i thought that was pretty cool <laughs> so honestly um just to end the non-spoiler part here if you have this book in your collection please do not be a fool like me and wait and wait and wait to read this i thought it was really good um there are a few good reads um posts that weren't too keen on this um one of the main points i think i'm going to mention in my spoiler section in a, in a moment um so check those out as well if you want more of a mixed opinion to see what other people are thinking. But on for spoilers now, so if you don't want to stay around for that, then thank you for watching. I'll speak to you in another video soon. If you are staying aboard for spoilers, then come and join me. Let me know your thoughts in the description. So let's see what I have written. Um, so I thought it was an interesting twist that Eve's mum was Kyra preserved. I did have a fleeting thought for like the briefest moment at some point in the book that that was going to be the case and then I almost was tricked into forgetting that thought have you ever had that before in a book I, I just other things happened and it sort of just slipped out of my mind um, and then when it was brought up I was like oh yeah I sort of thought that and I thought that was a really interesting twist actually and the whole like lies and conspiracy with the story that the like authority created for her saying that basically her dad was crazy and he tried to kidnap her and everything when in reality he was a really lovely guy and he was just trying to be a dad like they twisted it into making her think that they were the only ones she could judge that was so interesting like I didn't think it was going to get that deep in terms of like conspiracy and stuff so I really enjoyed that whole battle scene I guess you can call it when they found Ernie um Eve's dad that was fantastic my eyes couldn't keep up quick enough with the quickness of me changing the pages like I just couldn't devour it quick enough you know I had to keep going over things and I was like oh I'm flicking the page too fast this is just crazy it was literally happening like a film in my head it was amazing I actually couldn't wait to see how Ernie's scar which sounded similar to Eve's one triggered a reaction of sorts in my head this is what I thought was gonna happen in Eve so obviously when he cut off his arm and everything and he had that um, sort of detonating bomb trigger on the scar in his hand didn't he but I thought maybe that would trigger something in Eve's because she had a similar scar from whatever I can't remember now but um I thought once the sanctuary blew up something negative would happen to Eve and I'm not sure if it had anything to do with her pains um post crash or if that was just like similar timing I was a little bit hazy with that I didn't know the time span of when that was happening but does that I don't know if that makes much sense but that was kind of in my head <laughs> one thing I did find interesting was how barbaric the freevers seemed when Bram first came out of the um the, what was it the shoot they seemed dirty and brutish and really full of aggression however after a while like I guess living with them through Bram's eyes you really learn how much more advanced they are and how completely opposite really they are to how you initially find them um 
you know, when you're just thrown in, introduced to them in such a chaotic scenario. I thought it was at first neglectful writing, but it wasn't. I feel now that it was. We, me personally, I felt that way about the free, free evers. I always say free evers. Is it free evers? Because that's how Bram felt. All of a sudden, exposed into this world that he hasn't lived in since he was a child. These people coming at him, and then when they get used to his company, and that you see how much more advanced they really are than what they've been told they are up in the tower, and they're just completely different. They're they're not this crazy extremist group. They're quite logical and calculating, and they're trying to actually do what's right. It's just, it was fantastic. You sort of, me personally, again, I felt like that shift, and this is how Bram felt as he began to understand the people that you know took him in. I understood. Like, it was really nice. You weren't just being told it, you were being physically shown it and that was amazing. That was excellent writing. <laughs> the other thing I do want to criticise, which is obviously more of a spoiler because I'm putting it in this section, um, was the event of the plan with Bram being um, Cairo preserved and then going in back into the tower like secretly and being froze, um, unfrozen by his friend. Um, I just thought that that whole situation seemed a little bit too convenient. Now. Please, you know, let me know what you think on that matter. Do you agree? Do you disagree? It's for like because we didn't get to see it firsthand what was happening. Obviously, Bram was frozen. Um, it just it, it almost felt a little bit rushed, a little bit. Oh, he's frozen. Oh, now we're inside. He's being unfrozen. Do you know what I mean? Like obviously, there wouldn't have been a way for us to see the actual happenings of him being inside and getting through and possible risks and stuff. But I don't know. I just I would have liked to have known <laughs> the logistics of everything i'm pleased with the way that hartman sort of reaccounted everything it just it would have been nice to see it firsthand but i understand that that would have been difficult to do obviously because our main protagonist was literally out cold for it <laughs> from page 22 i totally called um the little section with bram's heights i you can go back onto my Goodreads progress actually, I'm pretty sure I wrote something saying hmm, Bram's fear of heights is going to play a part in Eve because she she wasn't scared of heights and I knew something big was going to happen where they, he's going to have to confront them um, and it it was awesome, it was a significant part, maybe not as significant as I thought it might have been but I thought you know that was still quite an impactful scene where obviously he had to do the jump and you know hold her and everything that final scene pretty much was awesome. Now this is one thing that I do want to bring up because I didn't really think about it too much until I read Aoife from Fred Weasley um, Died Laugh in her written review, I don't know if she talked about it in a video or something but I just was scrolling down and I saw a few friends had already read this so I was just gazing at their um, reviews and she mentioned the lack of um, diversity in LGBTQ plus um, representation in this book and I can, it sort of hit me in the face once I read that line I was like hold on wait you're right. <laughs> I mean, there was the briefest mention of two guys kissing or something, but it really wasn't enough when you think about the type. Like, there's no women for 50 odd years. Surely there's going to be more LGBTQ plus themes because of that. I mean, you know, the world's diverse pretty much anyway, but thrown into an extreme situation like that, I would have thought there'd be a rise. But it wasn't really explored, it wasn't expressed. I know that wasn't like it wasn't going to be a focus point ever really of the book because that's not what the plot is it's following these two other do you know what i mean but it would have been nice to see like a buyer character um in the free of free evers it would have been nice to see like an openly get do you know what i mean like it would have been nice to see a more diverse sexuality in the, the cast of, of characters that we had i do i do think that and i don't know if anybody else has thought this but i feel like eve could have some pansexual roots um let me try and explain this as best as i can i don't want to say terms and I've got the wrong meaning for them so please excuse me and correct me if I'm using the wrong terminology for something I don't want to be offensive or anything obviously um but I feel like obviously we learn or I thought it was quite obvious that Eve had some sort of a deeper feeling for Holly obviously her you know her best friend hologram friend or whatever and she knew he, she wasn't a real girl her age you know she knew that it was being programmed by someone behind it but even before she knew who Bram was and she recognized his eyes and everything she felt a connection there and I thought that could possibly spark into a love interest and then because she she even says something what did she did I write it down she just basically needed their presence whether it was as Holly or whether it was as Bram she was happy and because she doesn't see, it, it, to me it felt like she didn't see agenda, she just saw the person, you know, and, and what they provided for her and for her growth and 
she appreciated that and she loved that. I thought that was an interesting thing and I feel perhaps maybe that could go into pansexuality. I, I'm not sure. Um, and it, again, it was interesting from Bram's perspective because as he became Holly and as he was like acting as Holly, he literally did become Holly. He even said, I am Holly. And he thought as Holly, he, do you know what I mean? So that was an interesting um, dynamic there and that could possibly have um, some sort of Differ, differ in sexuality which is very interesting I really hope they do explore something like that a little bit more in the sequel um, however I don't really think we will get that much more exploration unfortunately because obviously there's no more need for Holly so maybe Bram won't express those um, differing personality traits because he doesn't have a need unless it's something that has a big impact in him I don't know I'd be really interested in seeing that so I think that's it for my spoilers. Please let me know again if you have any um, spoilery discussions. Please, you know, preface it in the comments. I don't want to ruin anybody's experience with this book. Um, but let me know what you thought about this book, um, how you rated it, if you've read it and everything. And I will speak to you in another video soon. Hopefully that wasn't too rambly. I was very, very excited when I wrote my review. Um, but I think I've made more of a cohesive understanding video review. <laughs> I'll speak to you in another video soon. Bye.